Hello there, and welcome to what I think will be the penultimate systems guide in this series. Uh, later on I shall be moving on to more procedural videos now that we've looked at most of the systems. So covering takeoff and landing technique, instrument approach techniques, abnormal and emergency training, uh, FMS training and so on. In the meantime though, there are a few systems that are worthy of note and we've yet to look at. And the first is the APU, or Auxiliary Power Unit. Now, I say the APU is worthy of note, but in the Q400 it's not nearly as important as it is on its jet counterparts. And in fact, it's actually a, a customer option. You couldn't say that of an Airbus or a 737. If you buy a 737, you know that you're going to get an APU with it, no questions asked. The APU also can't be used in flight in the Q400 as it can with most big jet aircraft. So you can't think of it as a backup to the engines in the event of a malfunction, for example. Nevertheless, it's still a useful feature and therefore worthy of some consideration. So it's a self-contained turbine generator located at the back of the fuselage. The exhaust you can see is protruding out of the rear of the fuselage here under the tail section. It generates 28 volt DC electrical power for the DC system and it also generates bleed air for the environmental control system on the ground. It's monitored by an auxiliary power unit, FADEC. The control panel for the auxiliary power unit is very straightforward. It's located here on the overhead panel. To start the auxiliary power unit the DC APU starter requires either ground power or it can be started from the batteries. Pressing the power put push button arms the APU start circuits and opens the fuel shutoff valve as indicated on the APU fire panel which is located here. Once this is the case, the starter push button can then be depressed and an amber starter light illuminates until the APU fires up to half its operating speed. Once operational, the APU will show a green run light in the power push button and an amber warn light in the generator push button indicates that the DC generator is not connected but ready for use. Selecting the generator push button connects the APU generator for provision of electrical power and a green on light illuminates. If a generator fault is detected then the generator will automatically be disconnected from the right main feeder bus the on light will extinguish and a warn light will appear. Bleed air switch is depressed to supply APU bleed air to the environmental control system while the aircraft is on the ground. If engine bleeds are selected on at this time the APU bleeds will disconnect automatically to prevent simultaneous usage. And don't forget, the APU and engine bleeds must both be selected off prior to engine start. Unlike jet aircraft, as we've already discussed in previous videos, uh, turboprop engine start sequences are not air, but actually electrically driven. The final light would provide a generator overheat warning, should the APU generator incur an overheat situation and if this did occur the APU fuel shutoff valve would close automatically and the APU would shut down. Fire protection for the APU includes a very comprehensive detection and extinguishing system and the pilot interface for it is on the fire protection panel here on the aft part of the overhead panel. The system itself includes a fire extinguisher bottle and distribution 
pipes as well as a loop temperature sensor. When the loop detects an overheat in the APU bay we get a red fire light, a master caution and a master warning light, a check fire detection light on the caution and warning panel, a bottle arm advisory light which will extinguish once the extinguisher bottle has been discharged into the APU bay an APU valve closed light the APU valve open light will extinguish and the red extinguisher light will illuminate once a fire situation has been detected the APU will automatically shut down and extinguisher fluid will automatically be discharged as well into the APU bay but if the discharge fails then the bottle arm light will remain on and the guarded extinguisher lights should then be depressed to manually discharge extinguisher into the APU bay. The APU can now no longer be restarted until the extinguisher bottle is replaced by an engineer. The test function should be used on the ground prior to starting the APU to make sure that all the relevant indications are working. However don't forget that doing the test with the APU running will actually shut the APU down so it has to be done prior to APU starting if the APU is required. To shut the APU down normally deselect the bleed air and the generator before shutting the APU down by depressing the power switch. The APU will shut down for a number of different faults this would include overspeed, underspeed, start failure, EGT, over temperature, low oil pressure and a few more. In the event of a malfunction the APU will shut down. The fail light in the power button will illuminate. The APU fuel valve closed advisory illuminates the valve open light will extinguish and the APU caution light will appear on the caution and warning panel. Because the APU uses a certain amount of fuel while it's running uh, care must be taken to ensure prior to departure that the fuel hasn't uh, imbalanced too much and as you can see the APU actually drains fuel from the left fuel tank. We also have fire protection systems for both engines and both baggage compartments. The engines have advanced pneumatic detectors in the engine nacelles to detect an overheat situation with dual loop sensors. Both loops need to detect an overheat situation before a fire indication will appear in the flight deck. In the event of an engine fire, the appropriate T-handle illuminates. Both engine fire warning lights illuminate. A continuous tone is played on the overhead speaker. A master warning light illuminates. And we get a check fire detection light on the caution and warning panel. Once the appropriate T-handle is pulled, the extinguisher bottles, we have two for each engine, arm and then can be selected using the appropriate switch. The test indication switch should be used as part of the cockpit preparation check to ensure that the various fire detection indications are working normally. The forward and aft baggage compartments are fitted with smoke rather than temperature detectors. If smoke is sensed in these compartments, the fire bottle aft light illuminates and the aft extinguisher bottle is armed and the baggage aft smoke or extinguisher push button illuminates. And I will demonstrate all of those features now using the on-ground test function. So here you can see the aft 
fire bottle arm light for the aft baggage compartment. The smoke extinguisher push button. You may have heard the triple chime and the master warning going off, of course. And you can see the vent inlet and the valve outlet for the baff aft baggage compartment is automatically closed. Pushing the smoke or extinguisher push button fires the so-called high-rate extinguisher bottle into the aft baggage area and the inlet and outlet vents close automatically at this stage. After seven minutes the low-rate extinguisher will then fire and the aft low and forward low lights indicate when the bottles are depleted. The system is exactly the same for the forward baggage area. To forget these indications should be tested as part of the cockpit preparation check along with the APU and engine fire indications. And that's it. Don't forget those of you at the VA can email me or contact me through the forum with questions and anyone else can comment here on the video with questions that I will try and answer. Also if there's a system you think I've missed out or neglected you'd like me to look at it in more detail then do let me know in the comments section. We have one more systems video to do that will be looking at the auto flight system of the Q400 and thereafter we'll start looking at more procedural and technique videos. I hope that these videos are of some use. I apologize for the sound quality on them but uh, hopefully you will be enjoying them and finding them useful nevertheless. Thank you very much for watching.